Brakate Yahua, Brakate Yahua Shai, Kohalo Yamla Yahua, Bahasham, Yahua Shai, Brachaha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahua is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahua Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Brachaha Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way to worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity, always in charity. To Brother Mathathia from the Great Millstone Camp, the Branch on Des Moines. And I'm um, not sure what I'm titled this lesson just yet, but um, it's based off this precept here. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, in verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Right? And that's talking about the, uh, uh, the day that burneth like an oven. That's the great day that's coming. See, when we start at one, it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the how about Shami Yahushua, Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, whom I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What day? Verse 1. You see? The day that's going to burn like an oven and ultimately is going into the the nuclear missiles being shot off, man. You see, the Lord said he would judge this place by fire. Peter wrote about it and said, what? The element shall melt with fervent heat. So before that day, Elijah would be here on this earth. And what would he do? Verse six. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So a question to all these other Israelite groups, man. Who is Elijah and where is he? Right? Because we here at Great Millstone, we firmly believe, you know, or, or or we hold our belief of who we believe that um Elijah the prophet is. You know, and I hope I worded that right. You know, but we proclaim our belief in who we believe that that, that Elijah the prophet was, man. You see? And he and he did just that. He turned the heart of the fathers to the children. And who are the fathers? Right? Because in the book of Job. This is the book of Job, chapter 8 and 8. It says, For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. And when we came into this faith, that's exactly what we have done. Because according to Jeremiah, let's grab that. This is the book of Jeremiah 16. Nope, I'm sorry. 6 and 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. You see that? The former age, man. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. And that's two-thirds of our people here in America and the rebels around the world. But the point being is that we're seeking for those old paths. And in order to seek for those old paths, we have to inquire. Go back to the book of Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers, man. You see? So who are our fathers? Well, it tells us here. This is the book of uh, Sirach 44 and 1. It says, let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begot us. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Wise and eloquent are their instructions, man. You see, so our fathers are these men that he's going to go in to explain. Uh, Noah, Enoch, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? So forth and so on. So it says that he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the sons uh, or to the children, which is sons and the heart of the sons to the fathers. So that means the fathers would be here in the last days. You see that? And it tells us here, this is the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 1. And let's start at 37. It says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come 
whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though, the, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. You see, this is the thing of the spirit, as it is written in Romans 8, a uh, chapter. Our spirit bears witness with us, spirit, that what? We are the children of the living power, man. That the Lord sent Elijah the prophet, right, back on this earth in order to restore the, uh, 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 the old paths. You see? And once again, <laughs> we hold firmly to who we believe that, 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 that Elijah the prophet is, man. You see? And it lines up with what exactly what Peter wrote. This is the book of uh, 1 Peter 1. And nine, uh, I started, matter of fact, seven, it says that the trial of your faith, because it says we have not seen him with bodily eyes yet in spirit, we believe the things that he say. That's why, uh, uh Yahweh Shah told Thomas, remember these things are written for our learning. Yahweh Shah told Thomas, you believe because you see blessed are they who don't see, but yet still believe, man. And that's speaking about us in this time. This verse seven, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Hamashiach, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see that? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of our souls, man. So let's go back. This is the book of Second Edges 1. And 37 again, I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. And now, brother, behold, what glory and see the people that come from the east unto whom I will give for leaders. Then we read in the book of Sirach, the 44th chapter, let us now praise famous men, our fathers that begot us, leaders of the people by their counsels and declaring prophecies. Right. It says unto whom I will give for leaders, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Hosea, Amos and Micah, Joel, Obadiah and Jonah, Nahum and Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. You see, so the Lord said he will give these men, these are forefathers for leaders, man. You see, the prophets are back. Where and who are these men? You see, that's the question. Where and who are these men? And what would they be doing in these last days? Because the, the Bible clearly tells us that they would be here. Let's go over to the second chapter. The second chapter, second Edges 2 and 18 says, for thy help. Now, this is what the Lord speaking to Edges. For thy help will I send my servant. Now, right here, it say Esau, but it's supposed to say Isaiah. This is the misprint that's within this app in the book. It tells us Isaiah's right. It says, for thy help, I will send my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits, man. You see that? So Ezra, Isaiah and Jeremiah would be here ministering, man. You see that? And these men came. Over 2,000 years ago, in the form of the apostles, right? This is the book of Acts 1 and, uh, and 10. Because we know these men were the prophets. Not 10, though, uh, but we're going to read up. But we know these men were the prophets that, that, that were ordained, that was brought back. That's why Yahweh Shah told them, blessed are your eyes because you see, because many uh, wise men and prophets have sought to look into the things that you see and weren't able. But they were those same men. <laughs> you see that? They were those same prophets in the ancient world, man. And these same apostles who was who who was the same prophets are back here today. This is the book of Acts one. And eleven. Matter of fact, I started ten. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, being two angels. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? Nope, uh, nope, nope. It's, yeah, it's Yahweh Shah's words. I'm tripping. Salakia. This is um, 
Acts 1, I'll start at 6. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And this has been the uh, uh, the question that all our forefathers have been asking, man. You know, when is Israel going to be exalted above the hills? That's what we're waiting on, according to the prophecies, right? Verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. This is the point, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. And that happened during that time. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. When did that happen? See, that's happening now, man. You see, it started with Elijah in the Malachi, the fourth chapter that we read. And it's being fulfilled even to this day. You see? Because the uttermost part of the earth is here all the way here on the west. That's why it's prophesied in the book of Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. And it says what? It shall no longer be said that the Lord liveth that delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt, but that the Lord liveth that delivered the children of Israel out of the land of the north and all the lands that they were scattered unto. You see? Scholars like to say, shoot, I was talking about Babylon and, and no, the hell it wasn't. Then why is we still celebrating the Passover then out of Egypt? You see? Let you know that's a proof, a future prophecy. And that land of the north is talking about here in North America, man. Showing you that the prophets would have to come back and they stayed. This is the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 10, and verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, it was, I'm sorry. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So John himself had to come back during this time. And you see that? So the prophets are back. Where and who are they? This is the book of Daniel. Chapter 12 and verse 13, it says, but go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest, meaning he shall die, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. You see that? The prophets are back. Where and who are they? This is the book of Job 19 and 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, man. Letting you know the prophets would be back. Where and who are they, man? That's why in the book of Second Edris, Edris made the statement and said, Woe is me, woe is me, who shall deliver me in those days? Meaning the days that we're entering into, letting you know that Edris would be here on this earth, man. Even Habakkuk himself, he prayed and asked the Lord that he wouldn't be on earth during the time of his wrath. This is the book of Habakkuk 3. Now, when you read this entire chapter, it's going into um, the destruction that the Lord showed Habakkuk, right? That would be upon the earth, namely America, right? But the whole earth would rock to and fro. But let's go down to the point. Verse 16. When I heard, right, this is Ezra, uh, Ezra, this is Habakkuk speaking. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones. So he felt weak, man. He felt faint after seeing his vision. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. And that's the chariots. You see, it's going to be a real invasion upon this place, man. Thousands and thousands upon chariots in the sky with our Lord Yahweh Shah leading them. But the point being is Habakkuk said, man, I, he asked the Lord, man, may I may I be in the heavens when this when this time come, when the day that burneth like an oven comes upon this place, man. You see. Showing you that he understood about reincarnation, man. So, you know, I want to make this long and drawn out, just just hitting a few points, man, that, that the prophets are back. Where and who are they? What would they be doing? You know? And how would you know them? You would know them according to what's written. It's the book of 1 John 4 and 1. 
says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the Heavenly Father, because many false prophets are going out into the world, man. You see? So we know who these men are in the spirit based off what's written about these men, about how they would conduct themselves, how they would move, how they, how they would have their being, and what they would be doing in the latter days. You know, so Lord willing, I hope this was edifying to Wadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.